Hello, dear friends. Hi, hello. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today is the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is about 11.30 on Saturday, so I am still finishing my iced coffee for the morning, and I get a pretty relaxing couple of days, which is fantastic. I love that, but I do have a lot that I need to get done. And friendly reminder, I will actually not be posting for about a week because I will be on vacation with my partner at the very end of this week. And I honestly can't believe our vacation has come up so fast, but yeah, I will be out for a week. So just stay tuned for the week after that for some really fun travel vlogs and reading vlogs while we are staying in a beautiful mountain cabin in Virginia. So stay tuned for that. On my agenda for today, I have some client galleries I need to send out for work, so I'll just be kind of like working on my computer. But then also today, I'm going to be filming my August TBR video. By the time this video is out, that video will also be out, so I will link that down below for you all. But I'm really, really excited to find out what books I'll be bringing with me on this vacation. Now, in terms of what I'm currently reading, because I am nowhere near done with my July TBR, and and I think I'm gonna have to admit defeat with it yet again because I don't think there's any way that I can get all of it done, which is such a bummer. I'm so sad about it, but I am reading two books right now at the same time. So I am still reading In the Palm of Darkness by Myra Montero. I talked about this one a little bit more in depth in last week's reading vlog, so I'll link that down below as well for you all. And I am a little bit over halfway now. I'm on page 110 and I'm really enjoying this, but it is not a fly through book. It is very short. It's only 180 pages, so I don't have a lot left, but it's not like a sit down and and compulsively read kind of book and I'm really enjoying taking my time with it so I'm allowing myself some grace to like slowly make my way through this one I'm still really enjoying it but it really hasn't been like a super big priority for me in the past few days to be reading and I want to change that I want to change that I want to be reading more I find myself getting really sucked down the rabbit hole of Instagram reels and Love Island and now the Olympics are on and I just low-key want to be watching content right now instead of reading but I know like in my heart I know that I feel so much better after reading rather than watching tv so I'm trying to curb that you know I'm trying to fix that but I also started yesterday Honey Baby Sweetheart by Deb Coletti and I got to page 51 already. This is incredibly easy to read and in this book we are reading from a like 16 year old girl's perspective. Her name is Ruby and she is known as the quiet girl. She's just kind of like trying to fly under the radar um, but then she meets kind of like a bad boy named Travis and he comes from a very wealthy family. She is raised by her mother and her mom and father have a very difficult relationship. She has a younger brother and things are going to ensue and this is really really easy to read and I think I really needed that paired with In the Palm of Darkness something that is like super easy accessible readable. Winston is chatting to the birds in the background if you can hear that little chatter. I do have a qualm to pick with this book though and while it's really easy to read I'm finding myself getting really frustrated with the writing style. This was a National Book Award finalist and it was published in 2004 but I'm just really not vibing with the writing style. Like I said, it's super easy to read, but I am just not a fan of when writers or authors continuously compare situations to other things. Like they continuously use the word like or as if. Ah, and it's, it's, it's all over this book and it's starting every time it comes up, which I swear is like once or twice every page, I'm finding myself really rolling my eyes. Let me see if I can pull up an example so you know what I mean. So in this scene in particular, just so you can get some context, her father is home and visiting them and they have a really strange relationship with their father. He is kind of not present. He only visits like once a year, but anyway, he like gives her a handful of crystals and she was like, I was reluctant to reach out my palm to his so that he could spill the crystals into it. It was a bit like the White Witch in the Narnia books with her Turkish delight light. One amazing buttery bite and you would have no choice but to keep coming back for more. And then it goes on from there. But it's it's things like that where any little action or thought from this character or in this writing style is then compared to something else where it's like it was like the dust that settles after a truck drives down a gravel driveway. D am I making sense? I just really don't like that. I think the best 
comparison I can make is A Man Called Ove by I think that's Frederick Bachman. I freaking hated that book because of how almost every other sentence hears something that a character does and it was like and then compares it to something else. <gasps> I don't like that. I really hate that. Like, I'm like, I can already visualize what the characters are doing, what actions they're doing. I don't need you to compare it to something completely freaking random that does not drive the plot. It doesn't even really teach me anything about the characters or how their brain works at all. I, I gain nothing from it. I've already considered DNFing this book, but at the same time, it is so compulsively readable. Like, I started it yesterday and got 50 pages through, and that's pretty good for me. So, I don't know. I'm kind of at, like, a weird place with this. Like, it was a National Book Award finalist. I want to give it a go, you know? It's also not me saying that, like, oh, if a book has won an award, like, I will automatically like it. I, I really don't believe that, but I want to give it a chance, but I'm, mm, I just don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm rambling and I'm ranting and that's not my intention. <laughs> anyway, those are the two books I'm reading currently. I hope you're all doing really well. I so appreciate you being here and I'll see you very soon. caffeine after 5 p.m. because yeah I had a Baja blast <laughs> we had some Taco Bell for dinner and I did not fall asleep until like after 3 a.m. I was just tossing and turning and oh it was it was bad it was so bad I did think though that it was a good opportunity for me to read a lot because I was wide awake honey baby sweetheart I dnf'd this last night <laughs> I'm so sorry, I DNF'd it. I like really was debating every single page I turned last night. I was like, am I even liking this? Is the plot worth following if I don't like the writing this much? Like every single page I was questioning my existence with this book and that stinks. You know, as a reader, I definitely think that a lot of readers would like it. I do think that the issues that I had with it are probably not a big deal to other readers. And you might even enjoy that writing style, but for me, I just couldn't. I got I got really, really sick of it. Let's see, there was a page where there were like two in a row of those like comparisons that I was telling you all about yesterday. There was like one piece of straw on my camel's back and then the other one was just one more. Can we put another one on there? And then my camel co collapsed and I want to take care of my camel, okay? Like, I don't want the camel with a broken back. I had to DNF it. So our main character, Ruby, whose perspective we're reading from, is experiencing a feeling inside of her that she cannot put her finger on. And it reads, that hollow feeling, loss, I guess, was gutting my insides, same as a spoon clearing the inside of a pumpkin before it is carved. And I was like, oh, that's one straw. Oh yes, here we go. <laughs> She's talking about how she works in a nursery and uh, like a flower nursery. And she says, there were the flowers with their tender shoots, newly brave, as well as the vegetable starts, which seemed small and hearty and sure as little kids showing you their muscles. Those were only like two paragraphs apart. Like it's that kind of writing style. Every other paragraph of like as or like, as if, similar to, I'm like, 
this doesn't help my reading experience. So last night I decided to completely deviate from my July TBR list because the only two books left on there were Human Acts by Han Kang and Watership Down by Richard Adams. Both are books that I genuinely wanted to read but at this point I was incredibly frustrated with Honey Baby Sweetheart. I was frustrated with my night. I did not feel like starting like really intense literary fiction like both of those books. So I decided to deviate from my July TBR and I picked up a book that I've been really wanting to read and it did not fit anywhere into my August TBR video but I wanted to read it so bad before my trip and that is Wicked River by Jenny Milchman. I started this instead last night and I'm having so much fun! Ah! I'm having so much fun! This is exactly what I needed. I needed a romp, I needed a horror, I needed a thriller, I needed a mystery. Ooh, and this started out with good, good vibes. So I got to page 28, which is the start of chapter four. Big, chunky paperback. It's like 450 pages, but I'm really, really liking this. This is exactly what I wanted. So far, the writing style is very accessible. It flows really well, but it still has this like beauty and description. And what I love is it, it takes place in August, which I did not anticipate. So at the very beginning of this book, there is a section called One Year Before, and it is about this woman who is being chased by a man in the woods in the Adirondack forest. She has to jump off a ravine and she thinks she's safe, but then the last sentence tells you otherwise. And it gave me the heebie-jeebies and I was like, yes, give me the heebie-jeebies. I I want that. When we actually start part one called Lost, uh, we are opening up with Natalie, who is a bride-to-be. She wakes up on her wedding day at this historical inn and she's getting ready and you know it's just kind of like we're getting into her brain what she's thinking about her relationship with her sister her non-existent relationship with her mother who i believe passed away like you're just starting to set the scene with all the people in her life who are going to be there at that wedding day and then she sees out the window that her husband-to-be doug his groomsmen are outside and they're arguing so she decides to go outside and kind of like interfere with them, but she kind of hides herself and she overhears them talking about very vague things, but obviously there's something heated up going on and then an unmarked car comes up and these two guys come out and the groomsmen are like, you know, hushed tones and taking the men aside. And so she's like, what is going on? They're like, this is my wedding day. Who are these random strangers? Why are the groomsmen like acting really freaked out right now? There's just some ominous stuff happening like right off the bat. Like I kind of thought the ominous stuff wouldn't happen until they hit the Adirondack forest because it's very clear on the back that it says there are six million acres of Adirondack forest, which makes it easy for the wicked to hide and even easier for someone to go missing for good. And Natalie and Doug are going to the Adirondack forest for their honeymoon, doing an isolated backcountry trip. As Natalie and Doug struggle with the worst the wilderness has to offer, a man watches them wielding the forest like a weapon. And once they are near his domain, he will do everything in his power to make sure they never walk out again. 400 pages of that. I am already engrossed in this. I already just want to carve out time, like carving the insides of a pumpkin with a spoon, to read this book. <laughs> That's all I want to do today. But alas, you know, life, life happens and stuff. And I am very excited. My sister is going to be coming over here very shortly. And we're going to go frolic in some flowers. I'm really excited. We're just going to go for a walk. It's a beautiful summer day. We're just going to enjoy each other's company and go for a little stroll out in the wilderness and hopefully not encounter any men with machetes. And yeah. so pretty right now. Are you gonna keep the sound on? I'm like, oh. oh my gosh, no. Yes, queen.
Oh my gosh, friends. <sighs> my sister and I decided to do a like spontaneous photo shoot while we were out in the flower fields and holy crap, they're beautiful. They're beautiful photos. So I will pop some over here. It was so bright and sunny and colorful and we just played around with some blurring, some just magic making, honestly, and ah. <sighs> I'm in love. I'm in love. Ever since we were little, um, I've always really known that I wanted to be a photographer from a very, very young age. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. But my sister has always been my model, like starting from like sixth grade, like she was always modeling for me. And for a while there, she was signed with an agency and that kind of like pursued and pushed her into like her actual modeling career. And we're just like a dynamic duo and I freaking love it. Like we just kind of bring out the best in each other and I just enjoy our time together so incredibly much and it was so fun to get creative and we both wore some really cute dresses and she took some photos of me as well um, that I can hopefully use for my website and social media and stuff so my website will be linked down below for you all it's always there if you want to check out my work and stuff and from there you can check out my photography based Instagram um, and you can see some photos of me on there as well I'm very excited to share these today but yeah so it is about two o'clock now on Sunday I feel really good after being outside and frolicking and getting creative with my sister I just, oh, it made my whole day. It was so spontaneous and like, mm, I love it. In a few hours though, I am going to be meeting my partner when he's out of work and we are going to go to the local indie bookstore and I am going to buy myself the Pisces by Melissa Broder because my TBR jar, which I will link that video down below for my challenge for my August TBR allowed me to buy a brand new book so i'm hoping that's in stock in paperback and i can buy that and then my partner is going to look to see if there are any books that he wants to buy and bring on vacation as well it's just very chill over here and i'm loving that i'm all for that so i'm very happy girl this I read this I read that read that He's crying. Yes, you are. You've been crying. As soon as I start filming, we start crying, huh? It is like 6 p.m. now on Sunday, and I just wanted to do a very quick book haul with you all because, alas, both my local independent bookstore and Barnes & Noble did not have what I was looking for, which was The Pisces by Melissa Broder. But I did end up picking up two awesome books that I want to talk to you all about. I just cannot wait for a book haul. I want to share these with you now because they are so cool. So I found both of these used in my local independent bookstore, and they're both so incredibly unique and weird and quirky and like... I don't know, every time I'm there, I just find like the most quirky, coolest used books. And I'm just so grateful for that because I would never have found these books or heard of them unless I wasn't just like casually browsing there. So the first book is this rad book. Look at that freaking cover. I am obsessed with this cover in this like almost square format. Look at that beautiful art. And this is called Crystal Eaters by Shane Jones. I'm gonna read out loud the inside flap, which I love. Also, it has deco edges, which I love. Like, it's so pink. I love it. Yeah, so the inside reads, Remy is a young girl who lives in a town that believes in crystal count, that you are born with 100 crystals inside and throughout your life, through accidents and illness, your count is depleted until you reach zero. As a city encroaches daily on the village, threatening their antiquated life and the earth grows warmer, Remy sets out to accomplish something 
no one else has to increase her sick mother's crystal count. An allegory, fable, touching the family saga, and poetic sci-fi adventure, Shane Jones underlines his reputation as an inspired and unique visionary. How cool is that? It is so cool. Again, look at that bag. So yeah, I got it for $6 used. That is pretty good, but yeah, this is just so cool. I'm so glad I picked it up. Like, how rad is this? Like, it's so unique. I'm not, what? What? Yeah, so I'm really excited about this one. And then the other book that I got, the last book I got is this beautiful hardcover called Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. Oh, stunning. I've never heard of this book yet again. And, um, it sounds so beautiful. It follows an unnamed woman and it chronicles her life on the outskirts of a coastal village, which is my freaking jam. It's my freaking jam. I love that so much. The charms of bananas and oat cakes in the morning and Spanish oranges after sex, the small pleasures and anxieties of throwing a party, exchanging salacious emails with a new lover, sitting in the bath as it storms outside. Sidestepping the usual conventions of narrative, Pond refracts the narrator's uncannily intimate experience in the details of daily life, rendered sometimes in story-like stretches, sometimes in fragments no longer than a page, and suffused with the almost synesthetic intensity of the physical world as we remember it from childhood. This is so up my alley. I freaking love books like this. So yeah, I'm very happy. Um, my partner is taking a nap right now, so I think I might put on a little ambient video. Um, I like to use the coffee shop jazz one. I love it. I'll link that one down below if you all are interested in ambient videos. And that one's eight hours long, which is sublime. So I think I'm going to put that on and I'm going to read some of Wicked River. I really want to dig more into that today, so I will go ahead and do that. <music> Good morning, sweet friends. Good morning. There honestly must be something in the air because I slept like crap again last night and I had a nightmare about ice cream. I don't know what that's about. Last night though, I was able to get to around the 100 page mark in Wicked River. Ooh, again, chunky paperback. I can never get over it. What is it about this format that's so like oohs to me? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I'm about 100 pages in. I am at chapter 16 and ooh, we are starting to read from the scary man in the woods perspective. And he was a part of a backpacking kind of community that really wanted to build this utopia in the Adirondack forest. They wanted to completely isolate themselves from the world. The rest of the group kind of chickened out, decided they wanted to return to civilization, but he decided to stay. And when he decides to finally go back out because he is really struggling to survive. He doesn't have the resources he needs. So when he decides to kind of find his way back to civilization, he sees wanted posters absolutely everywhere for him. We are not given any clues as to like what he did 
why is he wanted, but he decides that instead of going to jail and going back to civilization, he will return back into the forest, but he is missing socialization so much that he is trying to capture hikers to spend and create his own utopia by capturing people. So he starts making these like booby traps where he digs really big pits in the earth and he's creating all of these like diversions to try and guide either people or animals to his area. Very like contraption like, very eerie, super creepy. But the first thing that he gets is actually a wolf that ends up like breaking its leg and he kind of like tames it and is like talking to it and he's just kind of losing his marbles a little bit. He's been in the woods at this point for like two or three years I think. I'm not sure if it's leaning towards like he just really wants socialization or if this is going to turn to like cannibalism because there are definitely some hints of cannibalism in here too. Then we are also following Natalie and Doug, the married couple, and they have officially begun on their honeymoon in the forest and there is some smut in here there is some smut Natalie and Doug whew, they've got some fireworks going between them and I'm like wow okay calm down you two but so there is some slight smut it's not like over the top it's just a little it's a, I don't know I'm not a huge fan of smut so it's just a little cringe but that's fine it's nothing super crazy but basically Natalie is starting to kind of like piece together a few things from Doug's past he's all of a sudden being very vulnerable and open with her about his past and his childhood and his family. And this is the first time she's hearing any of this. So she kind of questions him like, why are you telling me now? We've been together for a while, now we're married. And he's like, oh, well, there's just something about being out in the wilderness that, you know, it's just the two of us. It feels more private. And she's just getting really sketch vibes from her husband. And I'm like, girl, you shouldn't be getting sketch vibes from your husband. She is just very, I like her though. I really like Natalie because she is questioning absolutely everything about Doug and she continuously has to reel herself in and ask herself like, is it the wilderness that's getting me? You know, I'm on high alert because you're in the woods. You really have to learn how to protect yourself if you hear like, twigs snapping and loud sounds like you have to be on high alert you don't know what's around the corner so she doesn't know if she's super paranoid because of that or if she's really starting to kind of like doubt Doug's motives in almost like a psychological manipulation kind of way it's just really interesting but I am pleasantly surprised by this I think it is really well written it's really well paced we kind of leave each chapter, and the chapters are pretty short. Like I said, I'm on chapter 16, which is only 100 pages in. We leave each chapter with like maybe one little sentence that keeps us hooked, and then the next section, or the next chapter actually, will bounce to like a new perspective. There are already just feelings of like, we cannot trust anybody here, but Natalie, she's my girl right now. I'm, I'm vibing with her, so. I'm just having a really, really good time. I'm enjoying this so much. In the Palm of Darkness, Myra Montero. I have not read any more of this since I started this vlog. I really need to. I, look at that, I am so close to that end. So I really wanna prioritize this one specifically today. I would love to finish it today and just sit down and kind of like read it as much as I can and then give you my full synopsis because it is still incredibly good. I'm really enjoying it. Very literary fiction though, very vague and strange and bizarre and, and and I really love that, so we shall see about the ending. finished it. The very end there, I would say like the last chunk that I read, the last like 50 pages or so, I was starting to like kind of lose interest. I was like, oh, this isn't quite a five star. And then that last two page chapter, it broke me. It absolutely broke me. And I just sat there like, that was so sad. I was not anticipating that ending. And at the very, very end, our main kind of character, the one from Cuba, his name is finally revealed. And it's tragedy. It's tragedy. This is tragic. 
Oh my god. Wow. That ending really did things for me. That bumped it from like a uh, like three and a half to four star as I was reading the last 50 pages to like five star. Just that last that last chapter. Like it tied so many things together and wrapped it up but in like this horrifying way that you're like what? I really liked it. I really liked it. The rest of the book though besides that shocking ending. So bizarre. I think this is a really unique, very strong book. The writing in itself is just very confident and it is translated, like I mentioned uh, in my last week's vlog. And the chapters each bounce between this scientist from Cuba's perspective and then this man who has always been living in Haiti and his like incredibly tragic life. And just from the get-go, Thierry, who is the man from Haiti, um, I really should have written down his family and his lineage because there are so many characters that he's talking about and like a lot of like stepmothers and godmothers and a lot of like having sexual relationships with stepmothers and I'm like who is who and what is what and nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles and all of this stuff. It was very overwhelming so every time we would kind of bounce to his chapter I would feel a sense of dread like I really didn't want to read from his perspective but I think in retrospect that was such a good comparison between theories, life, how like raw and rough and difficult and dirty his upbringing was like it just everything like they just continuously talk about the smell of piss and how dirty this like town is and how disgusting everything is and how interconnected everyone's stories are and very convoluted there are no boundaries between who is a sister to somebody and who is their lover and who is their niece and everything is everyone is someone's something and in comparison reading the like scientist's perspective from cuba he has a pretty simple upbringing very unique backstory a very complicated relationship with his spouse and it talks more about like his passion and obsession with frogs, his studies of it. It's just much more like kind of Western educational feeling. So it was easier to read from his perspective. And then theories definitely had much more like folklore and soldiers and war and murder and just really grueling murders especially. So yeah, a lot of trigger warnings for like just kind of very grotesque, gruesome murders and sexual relationships and ooh, just a lot. Animal sacrifice and animal cruelty. So yeah, this is not a light book by any means. This was dark. This was very dark. But I think overall, I really did enjoy it. But I think it's a book that maybe I didn't really enjoy reading it. <laughs> like the actual physical experience of reading it wasn't incredibly enjoyable in that last half. I think at the beginning I was so like just overpowered with the writing style and how unique it was, how very, like I said, very strong and confident the writing was. I think that's like really, really well done. But I think in retrospect, in hindsight, the book is incredible, but it wasn't enjoyable to read. You know what I mean? I'll definitely have to sit on this for a while and then talk about it in my July wrap up. quick update this book is so freaking addicting like I keep being like okay one more chapter and then I'll start making dinner one more chapter and I'll start making dinner and I've read like four more chapters so I really I just landed on this huge cliffhanger and I'm gonna try and read it while making dinner if that's possible but holy shit I just have not been able to read a book in this long that was this addicting and really kept me on my toes and that like it's just so engrossing and like an actual page turner so I'm just having such a good day I'm loving this
happy Tuesday friends I am an actual ball of grease <laughs> fun fact that is my middle name ball of grease August ball of grease bog for short um, which you can then you know change my name to Og bog <laughs> what there's something about summer Ugh. I am just here not to make puns and stuff but to let you all know that I made it to chapter 35 I am almost halfway through and I'm on page 202 i'm at the 200 page mark which means i've read 100 pages each day since i've started this so i'm very very pleased with myself i'm so happy i'm having so much fun with this oh my god <laughs> so much has happened and again like i was telling my partner last night because he was like how's your book and i'm like it is so addicting it is so incredibly addicting i cannot put it down every single chapter and the chapters are only like four to six pages long really digestible but you don't want to stop because each chapter the last sentence is always a freaking cliffhanger where you're like <gasps> and you want to know more you want to just keep reading and i just i have thoroughly missed this i know i've expressed it so many times but i have thoroughly missed this kind of reading experience this year i feel like i really have not read a whole lot of books that i like can't put down and I just want to bring it absolutely everywhere with me and I just want to know what's going on. I really really am hoping though that whatever this turns out to be because a lot of elements right now are starting to like become familiar a lot of like different timelines or different people's perspectives like certain odd characters are being mentioned in each piece and I'm like what is the underlying thing here? Thing? Thing. There we go. Plot wise, like I said, I'm not gonna be giving a whole lot away, but Natalie, she's still my girl. Like she is just questioning absolutely everything about her partner and her husband. And it's making me really think like, girl, why did you marry him then? Like everything he does, she thinks that there's a secret motive behind it. And I'm like, who hurt you? Like you should be able to trust your husband, but the fact that you can't, I think there's some underlying issues, babe. So I'm just really enjoying Natalie, um, her husband, Doug. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of him. Let's just be, let's just be candid. I'm not a fan of him. I think he likes to take control. I think he likes to be in charge. I think he likes the fact that Natalie has to rely on him specifically in the woods, but in general. In this book, like describing Natalie and talking about her character specifically, she's talked about how her old friends left her and didn't really agree with her partnership with Doug and they didn't even come to the wedding. They didn't want to be her bridesmaid. Like that relationship d was dissolved really quickly. So she had to ask her old like college friends that she wasn't even in touch with to be her bridesmaids. And Doug is kind of using that as ammo against her, how she doesn't understand friendship and oh I just don't like this guy like what an ass so yeah I'm really liking Natalie I think she has a lot to offer but I feel like she has to rely so much on Doug for the wilderness stuff because she doesn't spend time in the wilderness she only went camping ever a few times with him in the past and Doug has this whole sense of control he's the one who has the GPS he's the one who has the map he's the one who knows how to do all of these things so once we hit the like 100 page mark when shit really starts hitting the fan for them like she really has to rely on him and you can just see this power dynamic and it's so it's so good because she keeps like we get little pieces of her inner monologue where she's thinking about how she wishes she stood up for herself more, wishes that she had a sense of control in this relationship or in this experience of being completely kind of like lost and isolated in the woods. And it's just really powerful. I really like that relationship dynamic, but it does make me really feel like, you know, I'm going to lean more towards the character who is the underdog, who we want to succeed, who we want to like pull out of this not necessarily abusive relationship, but just this power dynamic and it really paints Doug in this bad light because Natalie is questioning him all the time but I'm like this could be a red herring maybe he is just a good guy and she just has a lot of trust issues I don't know I feel like you can just like really psychoanalyze characters in this and because we're given so much information it is a chunkier book you're just given a lot of information of their inner thoughts specifically more of Natalie than Doug even though it's third person we're 
more on Natalie's side and I don't know I'm just really enjoying it so that is my reading experience so far hopefully I can share some more updates with you before I conclude this vlog I don't know if I'll actually be able to finish the whole thing but I would absolutely love that and I would really really love to hear your thoughts friends if you want to comment below or if you're on Instagram you want to personally DM me I would love to hear your thoughts on these vlogs um, do you like it when I go a little bit more in depth with the plots like I am and I have been in this video because I feel like every day I'm kind of updating you a little bit more and more but they are for you know longer periods of time so the vlog is a little bit longer or do you like more montage -y, nice calming music and then just a few like I started this book I finished it here are my thoughts but yeah I would I would just absolutely love to hear your thoughts because I would love your feedback on these vlogs uh, specifically because I personally really love to talk in depth about the books that is all for me at this time I'm gonna go ahead and shower because I'm disgusting and I will check in with you all a little bit later Oh my gosh, friends, something very exciting just happened. This here is my first ever professionally framed piece of art. It's not my art. My dad gifted me an art print for my birthday, and some of you might recognize this, this uh, print, but I saved up some money and I got it professionally framed. I've never done that in my life, and it's a little expensive. It's a little more expensive than I thought, but it is done, and I picked it up, and... Let's open it, shall we? I have been waiting on this since the end of June or early July. If you hear background noise, my cat is drinking some water, but let's go ahead and open it. I'm so excited to show it with you all. <laughs> Gotta flip it. Are you ready? Are you guys ready for this? recognize this cover if you do pause the video and comment below but if you don't know <laughs> it is the cover art for one of my favorite books of this year so far creatures by Chrissy Van Meter but what makes it more intriguing than that <laughs> now my cat is gonna be playing with the paper but obviously that cover art was not made for the book this is actually a very beautiful old painting done by an artist called Ernst ha Haeckel Haeckel I'll put it down below. Who did all of these like really amazing studies of aquatic art. Let's get a little bit closer. Isn't that stunning? So at the top, we actually have the study and the figure name. So this is Tafel 49 Helen Hellasiitis. <laughs> so a lot of the Latin names and at the bottom as well, we have some writing. So we decided to add that. But yeah, I got this beautiful semi-gaudy gold frame because I love that look so much i've always loved like kind of that gaudy gold look and then this dark forest green matte to really make the sea anemones pop and it's huge as you can tell friends it's huge so i'm gonna see if i can hang this because it's pretty lightweight winston's having a lot of fun on the paper but i'm gonna see if i can get this hung up and surprise my partner with it because like i said it's been in the works for a while so i'm so happy it came in before vacation isn't it stunning look at that i love it so earth toned but then still vibrant where it matches our other prints here this one's an art print from um tetsura sawada but yeah i'm just i'm really excited <laughs> as you can probably tell i feel like i have a whole new living room this is the area that the painting's gonna go pardon winston in the background he's having so much fun some of you might remember for my birthday as well alec and i thrifted this and he bought it for me for my birthday yeah mermaids so we're gonna have to find a new place for that as well as some of you might remember too hi there i am uh this print painting i think this one's actually an original yeah i'm pretty sure it is um from my camping trip that already came in this frame that has to go somewhere else as well <laughs>
Okay, friends, don't judge me. I am in my oversized, like, men's night shirt. <laughs> it is so comfy, but it kind of looks like a hospital gown. It has these little cactuses on it, but I'm fine. I'm just living my best life, just being extra, extra cozy. But I am here to tell you all, I freaking finished Wicked River this morning. I'm so proud of myself. I read, like, 100 pages every day for, like, three or four days, and I was able to finish it. 450 something pages. I don't know if I have words yet. It was fun. It was super enjoyable to read. I really honestly did miss the addictive reading experience, like just wanting to know what's gonna happen. Did the ending surprise me? No. Did things wrap up? Yes. For sure, things wrapped up very neatly, very nicely. There were a few hokey dialogue bits at the very end there that I was like, ooh, cringe. But you know what? It was still a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to read. I'm so happy that I was able to read it before my trip because now I know I will stay clear of anyone I meet in the woods because it was terrifying. I just really needed this. I really needed this. I needed something that would perk me up, that would be fast and easy to read. So I'm just really happy in general. Like I'm happy I was able to fly through this in this week's reading vlog. That is incredible to me, finishing two like summer horror kind of books. I really liked the, the character building in this book. I thought it was done really really well but I think the story in itself like it started up with this like really great plot and stuff and then it just kind of didn't really know where to go with it and like every horror there can be multiple different endings where maybe the villain has redemption or revenge or you know there's just so many different possibilities and I think this one took a really safe route it's okay I think I would still recommend it to you all if you want like a summer wilderness romp thriller horror thing I enjoyed it, for sure. But I don't have anything more than that. I think I was more geeked about the reading experience than the actual plot. And that's totally fine. Sometimes you just need books like that. So overall, I think for right now, I'm giving this like anywhere between like a three and a four star. I don't know. I don't know if it'll actually stick with me anytime soon, but like it was just a lot of fun and we'll see. So that concludes this week's reading vlog, my friends. Thank you so incredibly much for being here. I hope you had a wonderful and pleasant time. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy my friends. Bye!